Okay, now let's look at implicit costs. Those are costs that we can track fairly uh, easily quantifiably, but that they may be in the wrong uh, categories. For accounting purposes, for example, a lot of our administrative people are all grouped into one administrative account. We can track the cost of their salaries and their benefits, any travel they may do, and any other uh, support we give them. But there's no revenue coming in to support how we're paying for them. That typically comes from the programs that we operate that bring revenue in or from any other grant funds that may be uh, coming from the state. What I did with those people was try to figure out what portion of their time was spread over which program. And just like we did with the salaries of the program managers that, that were easily uh, uh, contained to that program, I started to apportion those costs and spread them across different programs. Obviously, that added to cost of those programs, added to the, um, the pressure to grow the programs more, grow the revenue, and cut down other cost areas. But it gave me a more realistic picture of where we were spending our time. Again, it gave me another way to manage their time a little bit better. I found that some of the systems they were using were antiquated. Some of the processes they were using were very redundant. And it gave us an opportunity to do some training and get some efficiencies that we didn't have before. So those ex implicit costs were being spread among a lot of areas. Another area we found out as far as implicit costs go is that we do online education through a third party. We essentially resell training that someone else already has on an online platform. The way it was sold to us is that we could essentially make money in our sleep. All we'd have to do is post the classes on our website. Individuals would register, pay the, the company that's doing the online classes, and then we would take a small profit off of that every month. What we didn't realize when we set this up, though, is that their enrollment database doesn't talk to our enrollment database. What that means is, is every time someone enrolls in a class through that program, even though we get paid, we would have to create a class manually in our data system. We would have to enroll them manually in our data system. And a lot of times the profit on these classes was about 10 or $15. When I started looking at what we were paying individuals to do these registrations, around 10 to $11 an hour, and looking at the time they, they spent doing these, a lot of times we would be making about 3 or $4 a class. Sometimes we, we had large enrollments, we might even be losing money on those classes. It's harder to track that, it's harder to present that to the accounting department, but it was very easy for me to see where we were spending our time. What this has caused us to do as far as managing programs is we're looking at, number one, do we have the right classes and the right vendors? Secondly, do we have the right um, profit sharing with those organizations? Do we need to go back and try to re renegotiate a higher level of, um, of take on our side to cover our costs? But then the longer term problem is, how can we make the two databases talk better? And what this has caused us to do is we're looking at investing in a cloud-based data system that will be a go-between these uh, third-party providers and our data system. And we're looking at whether that's going to be something we can amortize over the next year and make, uh, make sense. To buy that cloud-based data system is about $3,000 a year. Right now I'm running the numbers to see if that's going to make sense to invest in it. But that's kind of the thing where we, if you look at it just from the accounting perspective and looked at it from the budget that I was handed at the beginning of the year, it looked like we were making an, on average 25% of these classes when the reality is the profit was more like 5 or 6% or, in, like I said, in some cases, we're actually losing money on those. So that's where the implicit cost came out, where it was a little bit harder to track, but once we started really assigning those to the right places, we really started looking at how our systems were managed. So that was another uh, lesson for us to learn how to manage our systems better. So the first lesson was about managing people and the programs that they ran. The second was about what kind of systems are we operating and what kind of investments we need to make. Third, how that's going to pay off. The last area I found that has been very intriguing for me and First time I ever heard about opportunity costs was about 25 years ago in an undergraduate econ class, and that's the opportunity cost. At the time, it seemed very abstract to me. What does that really mean? Does that mean if I'm tied up doing something, I can't go out and sell, or if I'm tied up doing something uh, because of inefficiencies, that my time is not being spent well? But it was always hard really to put a number on that. So we started looking at that from the perspective of where were we spending our time? Some of our programs we deliver, we design on our own, we deliver those, we have, full, um, we have full ownership of those programs. 
But as anyone uh, watching this video knows, a lot of times program development is a very expensive uh, venture to get involved in. It takes a long time to get things launched and you don't have any guarantee that you might sell a program. We were using third-party vendors for a lot of our classes as, as a way to mitigate this problem. But again, a lot like our online classes, we didn't have a lot of control over the, with the product. We had expenses we didn't really realize were more implicit and this was cost, causing us some other issues. So I started using the opportunity cost to what were, what were we missing out on? What profit were we missing out on? And should we make an investment in our own programs or not? The other thing that I ran into is that some of the third-party providers were pr producing courses that were very low quality. We were receiving um, complaints from students. We had students that would get halfway through a program and wanted to drop, and we had to offer, their, um, offer them a way to get out of the class and get their money back. Giving the money back was one painful process I didn't really like having to do, but the bigger problem was our reputation was being sullied in the marketplace. We were losing out on other uh, the opportunity to sell to other students, and then I was tied up spending my time instead of producing new programs, marketing those new programs. My opportunity was taking, being taken away with taking care of these students that were out there that weren't getting the product that they wanted. So. I learned firsthand exactly what that was costing me and the way I did that is I broke my salary down and my benefits down to a per hour cost. I did the same with my admin assistant, I did the same with the program manager that I was working with. And so every interface with a student that was complaining I was able to quantify each hour that was costing us that we had to pay out of pocket for our own budget and then adding to that what were we not able to do in the process. And I was able to realize that because of not being able to produce new programs, not being able to market new programs, this was in the tens of thousands of dollars just from one student complaint. So that opportunity that we were losing out on becomes multiplied throughout the system. So the summary of this is that I've learned to take some of these very abstract um, terms and put those into place to how we manage our programs, how we manage our people, um, and it's really beginning to Give, shine some light on why we should make some decision making and it's not just uh, off the cuff or from our experience but really have numbers to put behind those.